Father, because you are good to us, oh Father. If it wasn't for your grace, if it wasn't for your mercy, if it wasn't for your kindness, Lord Jesus Christ, where would we be? Well, welcome everybody. This is a, a brand new day today, this Sunday morning. Lord bless you and keep you. And to the online church, may the Lord bless you this morning. There's grace. There is a grace that can empower you to live the way which God has called you to live. And we, we embrace you this morning with the love of Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful, extraordinary, marvelous day with us in Jesus' name. Now, is there any first-time visitors this morning? Could you please stand? All right, welcome, 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 welcome. Like I said, have an enjoyable time with us this, this morning. And the peace of the Lord be upon you this day. God bless you. Today is a very special day. I like to say that we have not just one mother or one mummy. I said we have one mummy, that means Dr. Mary Banks. But we have a second mummy. And this second mommy, mommy, she's here this morning. And it is Bishop. We welcome you, Bishop. We welcome you. We welcome you. We love you. Gosh. God, we just say thank you, oh God, for the, the grace that has blessed us by your presence. You are home, and we are so happy that you are here with us. Okay. Please pay please pay close attention to announcement which are follows as follows. The Bible Theater and Academy of the Arts production dates are as follows. Half retreat this afternoon at 6:30 we will be having our production. And we are inviting everyone to come and be blessed this wonderful evening. And, I mean, come. Who's coming this, um, this evening? Yeah, go, go out, invite your friends. Because it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord with the young people this day. And East Kingston also will be having their production. And that will be on December the 21st at 6 a.m. Sorry. PM. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Wednesday night, uh, discipleship sessions begins at 6.30. Now, this is really important for us as believers to come together and be ministered the Word of God. The Word of God is broken down and is ministered with a particular grace that, in, as I said before, it enables us to do the righteous thing at the time which God has required it. So I'm inviting everyone, encouraging everyone to be here on Wednesday night for the discipleship session. Um, please be reminded of our youth evangelist, evangelistic service on Friday evening at 7 p.m. The Ocherias Church Anniversary celebrates, uh, sorry, i read it again. The Ocherias Church Anniversary Celebration begins this evening at 7 p.m. The guest speaker would be our beloved Apostle Mary Banks. 
So please let us go to encourage the Ocherius Church. The lost and found items, please check with the hospitations. All announcements should be submitted to the administration office no later than Thursday of each week. And please remember to turn off your phones because the service is being broadcast and recorded. This, in, this concludes our announcements. We pray that you will be con that you continue to be blessed in a special way this morning. I'd like to introduce you, Portraits of the Word. God bless you. Gentlemen, please make welcome tonight my friend, the incomparable Alvin Slaughter. Give him a great hand. work a work in your days which ye will not believe though it be told you Get no. 
Praise you, Jesus. God is good, right? He's an excellent God. And the reason why we can say that God is ex excellent, most excellent, is not because, well, he's God and we have to talk about good things about him. No. It's because he has been good to us. And when we look at his goodness, when we entertain his heart, woo! We say, God, you are excellent in all your ways. When we touch the love of Jesus Christ, we are changed. We are refreshed. We are built up. And that thing that seems so hard for us to do, that word enabled us to do that thing that was impossible for us to do. So this morning, God is simply asking this. Open your hearts. Open the doors of your heart wide open. You have that ability to do that this morning. Open it and ask God to do a work in our hearts that when we leave this place, we will be changed. We will be made stronger. We will be an overcomer in this life. So, where's my doc? I know she's there. I'm just, just pretending. Doc, welcome. Let us welcome doc. Our apostle. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. This joy that I have the world didn't give it to me. This the world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have. Oh, Lord. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, the world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. This joy that I have. Oh, Lord. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy that I have. Oh, Lord. The world didn't give it to me. Yeah, this joy that I have. Oh, Lord. The world didn't give it to me. You know. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Come on, this piece. The world didn't give it, the world couldn't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. 
to me. The world didn't give it, the world couldn't take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, worship him. Just worship him. Let's just worship him. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Wonderful Savior. Mighty God. Prince of Peace. My battle axe. My shelter in the time of a storm. My peace in the midst of confusion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody glorify him. Come on and let's worship him. Tell him thank you. Thank you. He's been good. I say he good. Oh, hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We magnify your name. We glorify you. We exalt you this morning. Oh, you're so good, God. You're just so good. You're just so good. Hallelujah. He's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. Oh, Lord. Storm clouds may rise. Oh, it doesn't matter. Stormy winds may blow. Oh, I'll tell the world. Well, let's tell the world. Wherever I may go. Oh, Lord, and I, I found the Savior. Oh, and he's sweet, I know. Come on, he's sweet. He's sweet, I know. Yes. He's sweet, I know. Oh, Lord. Storm. May ride. And I know that stormy winds may blow. I tell the world wherever I may go. That's now that I found the Savior. Oh, and he's Come on, everybody. He's sweet. He's sweet, I know. Yes, he is. He's sweet, I know. Oh, yes. Storm clouds may ride.
Wonderful Savior. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, yes, it's sweet. He's sweet. He's sweet. Hallelujah. He's sweet. He's sweet. He's sweet. Dark clouds can rise and stormy winds may blow. But I found a Savior. And he's sweet, I know. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. That's a testimony. See, see, he got to be sweet to you in order for, to, amen, for it to be real to you. Hallelujah. No matter how dark it gets, he's still sweet. I say he's still sweet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Jesus. Thanks. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise, saints. He's worthy of all the praise. Amen. I'm so glad I met the Lord. So glad I know him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say I'm glad I know him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless his name. The Lord is good. his name. The Lord is good to us, saints. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm just, I, I'm just enjoying Jesus. You know, how many of you can praise him because the devil thought he had you? Come on, somebody. Come on now. The devil thought he had us. Hallelujah. But God said no. Our Jesus stood up for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's the master. He's the master. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm just glad to be serving him. I'm glad to be serving the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to be found, amen, in him. Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. I want to be able to walk in the power of his resurrection and make it through the fellowship of his suffering. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We want to continue this morning. Are you feeling good this morning, saints? Amen. Amen. We feel good when we get our praise on on it. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, the devil get mad when you praise God. But two things I learned. I learned how to praise him, and I learned how to pray. 
Glory to God. And we're going to do just that. The Lord told us at the beginning of the year, he said, rejoice. Didn't he say rejoice? Because he knew all kinds of stuff was going to happen this year. Amen. But he said rejoice anyhow. Rejoice. Something great and grand is about to happen again. Praise the Lord. Something tremendous has already happened. When the Lord, see, you, you may not see the impact. I, I remember when um, reading the scriptures and how the disciples received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. And uh, the scripture says after that, they understood the message that Jesus had taught them pertaining to the kingdom of God. They understood it after they received the Holy Ghost. I said they understood it after they received the Holy Ghost. They understood all those things that he had been teaching them for three and a half years. Hmm. The Lord has been teaching us a long time. But this year, 2014, he gave us a revelation of the knowledge. And now we understand the things that he's been teaching us all these years. We're beginning to understand them. That's monumental. That's monumental. And even as the disciples probably did not know of the impact that their knowledge of the gospel would have on the world. Even though the Lord had told them to go out into all the world and uh, preach the gospel, I'm sure at the time that they received the Holy Spirit, they were not aware of the impact that the knowledge, the knowledge that these men had, how that knowledge would impact the entire world. Because what they preached 2,000 years ago, we're preaching today. We're preaching the same message today. <coughs> it has, it has, <coughs> excuse me, it has been a lasting message <coughs> that has, has carried us over the, the last 2,000 years. That was a tremendous impact, and it turned the world, it turned the, the, the hearts and minds of people in the world to Christ. It changed religions. It, it took people out of their religions and brought them to God. It changed nations. It turned nations around. It turned people around. Millions and millions and millions of people have been changed by that word, that message, that one message of salvation that Jesus gave his disciples. Well, the Bible tells us that the administration of the Spirit is glorious. And now that God is exalting apostles, true apostles, now that he's exalting the apostolic mantle and the body of Christ is, being, is now able to receive that fresh manner, that understanding, that revelation of the scriptures and have the same knowledge that the disciples had years ago, you're going to see a tremendous impact that we, we probably can't even imagine because we're looking through our little finite mentality. But the Lord is the same today as it was 2,000 years ago. Hello? And the word is too. The word is the same. And if the Lord was, was able to impact the, the world with this message 2,000 years ago, he's going to do the same this, in this uh, 2014 generation. Amen. It's, this word is going to spread like wildfire. And nothing's going to be able to stop it. Amen. Nothing is going to be able to stop it. I was um, uh, going home the other night, and, and, and Pastor Kareem was, was sharing with me how uh, he and uh, I think Anesta and different ones that go out to the university, UE I think it is, how they had a UTEC, 
how they had a whole week of passion and purity on campus to teach one with God, to teach this message of salvation, and how every day they were in the chapel teaching this. And, when, and, and as he was speaking, and he said, he said um, uh, there were some people that came by, you know, that, that hadn't been coming to chapel, and they, suddenly they just decided to come. <coughs> and they were able to hear this word. And I thought about the disciples. You know, everywhere that they went, they carried this message. You know, the Ethiopian got it, and he carried it into Ethiopia. And Ethiopia was evangelized by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, these guys went out into all the world. So wherever we are, we're Bible teachers. We are, we are Bible teachers. So wherever you are, you're a Bible teacher. Isn't that right? And you cannot, you forget it, honey. You're not going to unlearn what you know. It's, it's in you now. It's too late now. It's, it's in you. Praise the Lord. And, and um, let, me, let, me, let me say this to you, saints. Let me say this, because somebody needs to hear this. If you're hearing the word of God, and if you're receiving it, listen to me very carefully here. If you are hearing the word of God, and you are receiving it with purity, then you should in no wise be depressed. You should in no wise be depressed. Nothing, sh you shouldn't be in despair. Because, th th notice what I said, if you're listening to this word and receiving it in purity. Now, if you're listening and continuously trying to compare it to this and that and, you know, and, 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 and all of this, you know, all these other doctrines and all of that stuff, if, you're, if you've got those doctrines in your mind and, and, and trying to see where, where what we're teaching fits in with those things, you're going to be depressed and confused. Are you hearing me? You're going to be depressed and confused and in despair because you're not going to be sure of anything. But if you can know, like God told us, and let's just hear the Holy Ghost. Let's just come into the building to hear the Holy Ghost. Let's hear him teach us. Let's let him teach us. You know, it's a dangerous thing to eat off too many tables. Everybody can't eat off of too many different tables. You can't, you can't mix the manna because mixing the manna will confuse you. If you're not matured, it will confuse you, and you don't know what to believe, and you'll start picking out a little of this and picking out a little of that and picking out a little of this, and before you know it, you got your own doctrine. Amen. The Lord want me to say that. Focus. Let's focus on what God is saying. Let's, 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 let's back away from some of these tables we're eating from. Come on. Till you get matured enough. Amen. To eat the meat and spit out the bones. Amen. Some of us, you know, babes don't always do that. They, they get choke on the bones. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord wanted me to say that because there's a spirit of confusion on some people because you're eating from too many tables. You're, you're, you know, uh, there was a young lady. There was a young lady that was doing well in God. Devotion, her mother was a pastor. And, and, and uh, she was the devotional leader. She was the church administrator. I mean, this girl was, was on fire for Jesus. And, sh and she, when, they, when that internet first came about, and she started reading all, this, all these doctrines on the internet and what this group says about that and that group says about this. And before you knew it, she was in New Age. She had left the essence of the gospel and gone into New Age. It's dangerous, you know. It's just dangerous, you know. Some, some. If you can, if it, I told someone last night, I said it's dangerous to be where God was. We need to be where God is, a Amen. We need to be where God is now, and if and if you come to Bible teachers, if you walk through that door and you find God here, if you can hear the word, if you know the word is from God, then that's where you need to eat. You need to eat there until you get full. Just eat. Amen. You need to eat there. Stop, stop 
eating off so many tables. Hello? I am saying what the Holy Spirit told me to say this morning. Stop eating from so many tables now because you're getting confused. You're getting confused. Amen? Praise the Lord. Uh, mixing the manna is just as bad as uh, iniquity. Both do the same thing. They'll confuse you. They'll blind you. They'll steal your joy and utterly your salvation. Amen? I want, us to, I want us to look at something that we've been looking at. We've been looking at this for a while, but I want us to really, really look at it. I, I just want to see where you are inside of this. I want to make sure that you're, we're all on the same page. Let's go to St. John, the 17th chapter. <coughs> Hallelujah. Father, it's your word today, Lord. Bless your word, Father. Let it not go out and return void. Speak to us, Father. Speak to us from the throne. Open the hearts of your people, Father. Let Encourage them to open their hearts and hear what you're saying to them. Give us a spirit of enlightenment, quick understanding, Lord that we may digest your word and delight in it, in Jesus' name. Before I go any further, uh, the Lord has called for prayer. I want us to, to come in and pray. We need to, we need to pray, saints, uh, and also the leaders. The, the whole congregation needs prayer. We need to pray. I mean, I'm talking really pray. We need to pray. And uh, the leaders uh, need to also pray together. So we'll be giving you a schedule um, for the leadership to meet together to pray. We're going to pray. We're going we're gonna to obey God. We're going to come together and pray. But I also want the entire church praying in fact, all the Bible teachers, we're going to put them on a prayer watch. Amen. We, we want to we pray, saints. We got to pray. God wants us to pray. Amen. He wants us to commune with him, fellowship with him in prayer. Amen. And you're going to find that a lot of things, a lot of things are going to be answered. You're going to understand a lot more because that prayer invites God into everything that we're doing. Amen? Praise the Lord. I want us to go to uh, St. John 17, verses 1 and 2. First John 17, 1 and 2. These words speak Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. Mm -hmm. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Okay, I want us to look at this second verse here. As, as ministers of the gospel, we've got to make sure we know how to read these scriptures. Look at the first part of that verse. Now, uh, it's, it, it is following a plea for God to glorify him. Jesus is saying glorify him <coughs> with the same glory that he had before the world was. Now, in the second verse, he says, as a, as a way of explanation, explaining what he's talking about. He said, as thou has given him power over all flesh, that he may give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. So now let, let us connect the dots here. Let's connect the dots here. 
First, we have glorify me. All right? Hello? We have he, Jesus asking God to glorify him. Then we have him saying, as thou hast given him power over all flesh. Now remember something. The key here is this is a prophetic prayer. He is praying as if these things have already taken place. When he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh. He's praying, looking to the resurrection. Looking beyond the cross and looking at the resurrection and those things that will take place after the resurrection. But notice what he says here. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he may, that he should do what? Give who? Eternal Give eternal life to as many as were given to him by God. So now we see the power over flesh. Him having power over flesh is directly related to him giving us eternal life. Let, uh, let, us, let us connect these dots now. See, I want you to understand this. That's why I keep going back over this. I want you to understand this. Jesus makes mention that God has given him power over all flesh. And he also says that. In other words, this power that you have given me over all flesh is directly related to the fact that I can give eternal life to as many as you have given me. So in other words, those who receive eternal life through Jesus Christ also receive the fact that Jesus has power over their flesh. Are you, are you, I want you to be able to see this because when people say we can't live holy, we got to be able to explain why we can. And, and this, is the, this, is the, this is the scriptures, this is the foundational scriptures of the gospel. This is foundational. Jesus saying that as many as receive eternal life, e every one of those people that receive eternal life, I have power over their flesh. Now, what is he saying, though? He's not saying that I have power over their flesh externally. But I have power over their flesh internally. In other words, make them one as we are one. I'm in you and you're in me. So therefore, when I give them eternal life, how am I going to do it? I am going to come and live in them. And because I live in them, I have power over that flesh. And notice what he says here, because I want you to connect another dot here. He says, as you have given him eternal life, over, you have given him power over all flesh that he can, that he can give eternal life to as many as, the, as, as you have given him. He's saying now, as many as you give me, I'm going to live in them, and they're going to have eternal life, and the mere fact that I'm living in them means that I have the power over their flesh. And they live because I'm in them. That's the same as Paul was sharing with us when he said, the life that I live now, it is no more I. Where's the scripture? Galatians 2 and 20. We've gone there so many times, we should know it by now, right? Hold that, hold that 17th chapter, and we'll, we'll, we're going to add this to it. <coughs> Pray for Dr. Banks, saints. All right, now notice what he says here. I am crucified with Christ. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, 
I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, now, this scripture and St. John 17 and 2 are directly related. They're both saying the same thing. Do we see that? So you need to be able to understand this. And the reason being that uh, Jesus was our schoolmaster. What he taught, what he taught is what the disciples taught, what the, what the apostles taught. Is that right? Yes. Amen. So when he says, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Now, so does Paul say, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. How am I living? I'm living because of what? Because of Christ being in me. Is that right? And the life which I now live in the flesh, what does he say here? I live by what? I live by the faith of Jesus Christ. It is his faith that has my body alive. Are you, are you understanding this? It's his faith that has our body alive because he is in us. God has really blessed us with this, saints. Glory to God. And he's trying to make it really, really plain. So once we are born again and Christ lives inside of us, Christ saying, he's saying, and Paul is saying, the life that you're living now, you're living because Jesus is in you. That's different from the person that doesn't have Christ. The person that doesn't have Christ is living by the breath of life. Come on, somebody. But the one that has Christ is living by the Holy Ghost. You cannot die as long as the Holy Ghost is in that body. Hello? I say you cannot die as long as the Holy Ghost is in that body. Jesus did not die till he gave up the ghost. Are you working with me? Glory to God. So you cannot die as long as the Holy Ghost is in your body. So Jesus is saying, if when you give me eternal, when you have given me, you have rather given me power over all flesh. I have power over all flesh. Now this is where the theologians in our kind of part company, because they make this insignificant. But this is most significant. This is most significant because this is the mystery of Christ. This is the mystery. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Notice what he says here. Jesus says something else here. Watch this. That, that helps us. Um, he says he wants them to, he wants us to be with him. I'm trying to find the verse here. <clears throat> well, let's read it here. This is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast that thou hast sent. Now notice this. Notice what he's saying here. That once I have come, once, once I have come to live inside of them by the power of the Holy Ghost, they, they will know you and they'll know me. That's why there's another scripture that says we don't even know that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Is that right? That, and that's what he's saying here. Once I have lived in them, once I have come to live in them, they will know me and you. Because the Holy Ghost is the embodiment of the Godhead. It's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Isn't that right? Glory to God. Then he says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gaveth me to do. And now, Father, glorify thy me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Glory to God. Amen. And see, he can, he can ask for some things here because he's, he's been obedient. He's done, he's done what he was sent to do. 
Amen? I've manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Thine they were, but you gave them to me. Now they have known all that now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Everything that I've done, you were doing it. They know that now. I made sure of that. I didn't take any glory of myself. I didn't take your glory. I didn't touch your glory. I made sure that they knew that I could do nothing of myself, that everything I did was according to your power. For I have given unto them the words which I gave unto me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and that they, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I, have, and I am glorified in them. Notice what he says here. And now I am no more in the world. Remember I said he's, this is prophetic? See, he's, he's praying as if these things have already taken place. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one, how? As we are. I need them to be just like us. Come on, come on, come on. Just as I am one with you, I need them to be one with you, one with us. Now, this is where, as I said, theologians and I are kind of part, because they don't take this literal. You see, if you don't take this literally, then you're, you're, you're standing in the same position that the scribes and Pharisees stood in. You're condemning Christ for de declaring himself to be the son of God. You have to take this literally. We are even as he is. Come on. As he is, so are we. Is that not scripture? Hello? And Jesus prayed for that. He prayed that we would be just as he is with the Father. We would be one with the Father. Are, are you hearing God? Yeah. And he is the one that was able to make that happen. We have been made one with the Father through Jesus Christ. By Jesus coming to live inside of us. He brought us to the Father and brought the Father to us. Come on. Hello. That's why he could say, I'm the door to the sheepfold. No man can come in except he come by me. Are you hearing God? Now, do we take this literal? Amen. St. John 14. Look at St. John 14. Thank you, Pastor. St. John 14 and 19. Read the 18th verse first. 18 and 19. Uh, 18, 19, and 20. Okay. I will not leave you comfortless. Mm -hmm. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Uh huh. But you see me because I live, you shall live also. Okay. But you see me. And because I live, you will live. Mm -hmm. Do you see this? The world, will, the world seeth me no more. The world can't see me. You know, what did he tell? Let's connect the dots now. What did he tell Nicodemus? <coughs> Someone he told that the spirit comes without observation. Someone said that. It, it comes without observation. In other words, you know, you don't, it's like the wind. You, 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 don't, you can't see it, but you know it's there. Because you see the evidence of it. You can feel it. Isn't that right? And, he, and that's what he's saying. He's saying, the world won't be able to see me, but you will. You'll know I'm here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isn't that exciting, saints? Glory to God. He said, let's, let's look at that again. Yet for a little while, but ye shall see me, because I live, ye shall live also. Amen. 
What does the 20th verse say? At that day, you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. In that day, when I come to live inside of you, you'll know that I'm in the Father. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Glory to God. And I am and, and I'm in you. Praise the Lord. That's the that when, when he comes to live in us, then we'll see. We're supposed to see the evidence of all these scriptures fulfilled in us. These scriptures are supposed to be fulfilled in us. This is the gospel that was supposed to make us happy. This is the good news. This is the good news. Glory to God. See, uh, something that, 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 you know, this is another lesson that I had prepared for. Uh, hmm. Glory to God. But I want to show you something. I started this the other night. But if you look in Galatians. Yeah, let's go back to Galatians. Hallelujah. Third chapter. Hallelujah. I want you to see something on the 14th verse. Galatians 3 and 14, uh -huh. that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this is the blessing of Abraham. I want you to make note of this. People talk about the blessings of Abraham. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when they talk about the blessings of Abraham, they always take us back to material things. You know, uh, the name it, the claim it stuff. You know, the, the car, the house, the land, and the money. Glory to God. But now, look at this scripture here. It says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Now, notice, notice, now, notice there's a, what? Is that a semicolon? Yeah. Amen. That means he's going to explain what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Look at this last phrase. What does that say? That we, that we might what? Receive the, promise. receive the promise of what? The Spirit. That's the promise that the Gentiles should have been looking for from Abraham. See, watch this now. I want, I want you to think about something. If the, blessing, if the blessings of Abraham were material, material things, why is it that in Deuteronomy 28... Those blessings of Abraham, the material blessings of Abraham, were only allocated to the Jews. Come on. In, in, in Deuteronomy 28, though, though, the, God told them to separate themselves from the Gentiles. And if you, stay, if you remain separated from the Gentiles and keep my commandments, I'll bless you going in, bless you coming out, bless the fruit of your basket, bless the fruit of your store. I'll bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Deuteronomy 28. But those blessings were confined to the Jews. Hello. So when we start talking about a Gentile church, you can't take now those blessings that were allocated for the Jews and throw them over here on the church. Because now, those blessings that were allocated back then, it left no man without. Hello? It left everybody well off. Oh, yeah. It, it sounded like the Jews were going to be blessed no matter what. As long as they obeyed God, they were going to have plenty. Hello? But over here in this new covenant now, glory to God, in Philippians 4, Paul said, I've learned how to abound and be abased. I've learned how to have plenty. I've learned how to have little or nothing. Hello. Glory to God. But in all things, I've learned how to be what? Content with whatever state God has me in. That's not the testimony of the Jews. That's not the testimony of the Jews. God didn't even put them to that. He said, I'm going to bless you. If you keep my commandments, you're going to have, 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 have. You're going to be the head and not the tail. Amen. 
But now when we talk about the blessings of Abraham that were going to be sent down from generation to generation all the way down to the Gentiles. Because let me tell you something. The blessings of Abraham were given before Israel was ever a nation. These promises to Abraham were made before Israel ever became a nation. Hello? Because Israel didn't become a nation until after Jacob. Hello? After his 12 sons. Amen. That's when they became a nation, after they came up out of Egypt. Are you working with me? Glory to God. God made them a, gave them civil laws and made them a nation. But before they ever became a nation, before they ever became a nation, God made promises to Abraham. And notice what this scripture is saying. Glory to God. Back here in Galatians 14, that the promise, the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive what? The promise of the what? That's the blessing of Abraham. That's the promise. That's what God promised Abraham before Israel was a nation. Hello. Are you, are you working with me? So when, 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 when people say, well, well I'm, I have the blessings of Abraham, ask them, do they have the spirit? Because that's the blessing of Abraham. Hello. Because even, even if you go to the material things, and you talk about all those material blessings of Deuteronomy 28, glory to God, the Bible says that that covenant was disannulled. The Bible says they didn't keep that covenant. So there was need for that a new covenant be established. So why are we still claiming the blessings of a covenant that God has disannulled? Come on, that God has said is old, waxed old, and it's not good for anything now. Come on, it's all been nailed to the cross. Oh, are you hearing God? Because in that covenant, there wasn't any suffering. But in this one, in this covenant, we are appointed to suffer with Christ. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I said, this is a better covenant. Even though there's suffering in it, it's still a better covenant. Glory to God. Because, because, you know, let me tell you something. This, this thing is so powerful with Jesus being in us. See, it's so powerful because not only is Jesus in us, for, the, for overcoming sin, but also for overcoming suffering. Yeah, because Jesus said, you know, I've already overcome the world. He said, Peter, they're going to they're gonna deliver you guys up. They're going to deliver you up. They're going to persecute you. They're going to kill some of you. But I have already overcome the world. In other words, I am the power that's in your flesh. And I know what you can bear. Because I'm going to bear it for you. Glory to God. I'm the one that's going to bear the suffering. I'm the one that's going to bear the persecution. I've already been there. I've done that. And I can do it again. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, when, when Paul was on his way to Damascus and, and Jesus knocked him off of that donkey. Amen. He asked him. Saul, why persecuted thou me? What is he saying? I'm the one that you persecuted. I'm the one that's in those bodies that you just threw into prison. I'm the one that you stoned to death. You're, you're persecuting me all over again. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So there, this blessing, this blessing of Abraham is Christ. It's the spirit. Notice what he said, that we should receive what? The spirit, that's the promise. That's the promise of Abraham that was to come upon the Gentiles as well as the Jew. Are you hearing God? And that's what makes us of Abraham's seed. That's what makes us of Abraham's seed. Are y'all hearing God? Because Jesus came in Abraham's seed. Didn't he come through Mary? He came through Mary, didn't he? Hallelujah. And now we're his kinsmen. He's the first of many brethren. But we just like him. Look at this. Let's make it even plainer. Look at the, um, 
15th verse. Brethren, mm -hmm. I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Mm -hmm. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. To Abraham and who? His seed. His seed. Seed. Where the promises made, uh -huh. he saith not, and to seeds. He didn't say seeds, as in what? Many? Mm -hmm. mm -mm. But as of one, uh -huh. and to thy seed, which is Christ. Okay, so he's saying that this promise, did you get this the last time? Yes. Yes. That this promise that was made was made to Abraham and Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. Now, Abraham's seed is Christ. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. the, Christ is Abraham's seed because he came through Mary. Mary is the one that supplied him with a body. Are you hearing God? Mm -hmm. A flesh and blood body. And that made him, him <coughs> of Abraham's seed. So, according to this, the promise was made to Abraham and to Jesus. That's significant. The promise was made to Abraham and Jesus. In other words, I'm going to give you the spirit. I'm going to give you the spirit. You see that? That's why Jesus was a child born of the Holy Ghost. Was not that promise made to him? Did not we just read that it was made, that, that the promise was what? The, the spirit, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Wasn't the promise the spirit? Yeah. Hallelujah. Abraham was promised the spirit. Jesus was promised the spirit. Right? When did Abraham receive it? At the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because he was in the grave, mm -hmm. could not be made perfect without us. Amen. Come on. So now Jesus went into the grave, preached to those souls. Amen. Let them know I'm the one you've been waiting for. Abraham, I, I'm that righteous seed that God promised you. Glory to God. So you can get up now. We, I can take you and present you to the Father. Hallelujah. 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 I can perfect you now. He gave them the spirit. You know, that's the awesome thing about God. The awesome thing about God, if he make a promise, glory to God, if you die before you receive that promise, God will come in the grave and make sure you get it. C come on, somebody. Glory to God. The grave can't even keep God from fulfilling his promise. He went in the grave, and he, gave, he met Isaac where he was. He met Jacob where he was. He met Abraham. Amen. All the old patriarchs, Elijah, Elisha, glory to God. He met them where they were. Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, all of them were down there waiting for him. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, this righteous seed. Amen. I am the promise. I'm, I'm the one that God was talking about when he made the promise to Abraham. He said, I'd give, I promise you and your seed. Hallelujah. So Abraham, he gave it to me. This is Jesus. He gave it to me and I came to give it to you. Because you can't get it except by me. Jesus, hallelujah. Nobody could come up out of the lower parts of the earth except they come by Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the door. No man cometh up to the Father except by me. Praise the Lord. So this, this, this seed, now I want you to see this seed is the Spirit of God. This Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost is what was promised. The Holy Ghost is what was promised. But look at Jesus. Look at Jesus when he received the Holy Ghost. Look at the significance of it. Look at the significance of it. He said, Father, because see, back in here in St. Saint, in Saint John 17, I'm trying to find the verse. I'm, so, I'm getting too excited. I can't, I can't remember my verses here. Um, he said that um, he, wanted, he wanted us to be with him. Where is that? We in St. John 17. You guys, you guys are supposed to know your Bible now. Amen.
Yes. Look in, look in verse 24. Read that. Father, uh -huh. I will that they also whom thou hast given me uh -huh. be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me me before the foundation of the world. Now, now, let's connect these dots here. I will that they also, this is what I want. This is something I want. I want them that you've given me to be with me where I am. Something God said to me when I was reading this. I said, okay, Lord, all right, okay. Cool. I got this. He said, no, you don't. <laughs> he said, no, you don't. I said, yeah, Lord, I got this. I understand this. He said, no, you don't. He said, because you have gotten rid of the key element here. You've forgotten that Jesus has a soul. What do we do with his soul? Hello? What went to hell and paid the price? His soul. His soul. And you know that is so significant because the fact that he had, he, his soul was righteous, that's what qualified him to save our soul. Hello? He went to bat for our soul. Because his soul was righteous. He never committed a sin. But now it's almost like we forget that. Theologians have forgotten that he has a soul. Because we always see Jesus as the Holy Ghost. I want you to think about this. When we think of Jesus, we always think of him as the Holy Ghost. Hello? Right? And okay, that's, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with that because he's one. He's one with the spirit. Okay. But let's not forget he has a soul. Because he has to be an example of what we are. All right? So, so what happens now? He's resurrected. What gets resurrected? The soul, right? Hello? Yeah. And how did the soul get resurrected? The, spirit. the spirit. The spirit raised him from the dead. So when the Holy Ghost comes to resurrect Jesus, now here, here's his soul in hell, and then the Holy Ghost comes down to resurrect him, what happens? The soul gets back in the spirit. Right? The soul is back in the spirit. Are you hearing God? And notice what he says about that, though. He says, make them one as I am in you and you in my body. Come on, somebody. Because the body was where? Where was the body? In the tomb, wasn't it? Wasn't the body laying in the tomb? Hallelujah. So the spirit came. Jesus gets back in the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost apprehends. That's the word Paul used. I want to apprehend that thing that has apprehended me. Come on, somebody. So the, 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 the Spirit of God comes and apprehends Christ. Puts him in the, in the Holy Ghost. Then the Holy Ghost goes in the tomb and gets the body up. Come on, somebody. But what happens now? Jesus is where? Where is his soul? In the Holy Ghost. And then the Holy Ghost is what gets in the body. Yeah. Are y'all hearing God? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Is that not the same yeah. as we are? Yeah. Come on. Is he not the first of many brethren? Hallelujah. He's, hallelujah. He said, make them one the same way we are one. I'm in you and you in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. So just like our, his soul was in God, so is our soul in God. We're in him. We're in him. We're in him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hid with Christ in God. Are y'all hearing? 
Are y'all hearing God? Yeah. Amen. And then it's the spirit that resurrects the flesh. So that's why Paul could say, the life that I live now is not I that live. In other words, it's not my soul that has this body alive. But it's now Christ that's living in my flesh. Christ is living in my flesh. Hallelujah. And I'm living in the Holy Ghost. I'm living in the spirit, but the spirit is living in my flesh. Come on, somebody. Are, are y'all hearing God? Yeah. Amen. I want us to connect these dots because I don't want us to be confused about this. See, because we got to remember Christ had a soul. Now, because if you don't, if you do, if you do away with his soul, then you don't have any, any accountability for Christ. What learned obedience? The Holy Ghost is all, all, the Holy Ghost is God. So you can't say the Holy Ghost learned obedience. Christ learned obedience by the things he suffered. So what are we saying? The soul of the man. He never usurped authority over the spirit that was in him. Are you, are you, are you hearing me? It was the soul of Christ that was living in that body, living in the Holy Ghost, that never usurped authority over the Holy Spirit. It was the soul of Christ. And he says, now you're going to have to be just like that. Your soul has to be in obedience just like mine was. You, you, are you getting that? Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice what he says. <coughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm trying to get through this. I'm trying to go. So Y'all praying for me, saints? Amen. Amen. Now, this 24th verse says, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may do what? Behold my glory, Behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. I want them to be with me and behold my glory. What is the glory that God gave Jesus? Holy Ghost. I want them to be with me. What is, who is the me here? Who is, who is the me? The soul. This is the cry, cry out of Jesus' soul. This is Jesus' soul crying out. In other words, Jesus said, I'm going to be in the spirit, and I want them in the spirit too. I'm in you, Lord. I want them in, 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 in me. I want them in me with you. Did not the scripture tell us that our life is hid with Christ in God? Huh? Our life is hid with Christ in God. He said, I want them to be with me. So that where I am, there they'll be also. Right? Beholding my glory. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. Saints, you know what? You need to just stop a minute and just think about the fact that you and Jesus are both sitting in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We are seated with God in a heavenly place. Oh, my God. We are seated with him in a heavenly place. Isn't that glorious? Glory to God. He, he said he seated us with Christ in a heavenly place. That heavenly place is the Holy Ghost. We are actually seated with him in the Holy Ghost. And then he said, now, I want them to behold my glory. I want them to see the power that I have over their flesh. Woo wee Glory to God. How many of us rejoice the day we got saved? Hallelujah. Oh, my God. How many of us said, oh, Lord, what is this? When we got saved, we were like, oh, my God. And most of us said this. Oh, if I had known it was like this, I would have got saved a long time ago. Come on. Anybody said that? I know I did. Praise. But, but look, look, at, look at what happened when we got saved. We were just overwhelmed. We were overwhelmed at the change that was in us. Do you remember that? You all are mighty quiet. Does anybody remember the change that took place the moment you got saved? The instant you got saved, there was an instant change. And you begin, oh, my God. And we were like, oh, Lord. I was like mesmerized. Like in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, I had changed. I moved from mortal to immortal. Oh, ha, ha, basah. I moved, rather, from darkness to light. 
Come on, somebody. I moved from darkness to light. I moved from death to life. Did you not? And we were, we were so happy. We were so happy, and we were like, whoa, what is this? Can I get a witness? <laughs> Can I get a witness in here? See, sometimes we just need to remember the Holy Ghost. We need to remember what happened to us the day we got saved. Some of us done forgot what it was like to feel, amen, the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody ought to be rejoicing because you got the Holy Ghost. Amen. He actually living on the inside of you. Glory to God. We were just so excited. We were so elated that we had received the Holy Spirit. It was like, whoa. What was happening? We changed. Instantly. Amen. Instantly. There was a change. What were we doing? Beholding his glory. We were beholding his glory. We were beholding the fact that Jesus was in this flesh, and all of a sudden this flesh was totally different. It might have looked the same, but it wasn't the same. Glory to God. It looked the same, but it didn't feel the same. It looked the same, but it didn't think the same. It looked the same, but it didn't want the same thing. All of a sudden this body was different. Oh, and the greatest thing about it was it didn't want to sin. Hello, I say the greatest thing was it did not have a desire to sin. Isn't that awesome? When that spirit came in, we lost that desire to sin. What was happening? We we're beholding his glory. We we're beholding his glory. We're looking at him having power over this flesh. We're watching Jesus with power over our, we don't even understand it. Glory to God, amen. Those that were in these relationships that they shouldn't have been in, they went home and told, told the man, you got to go, baby. The thrill is gone. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. You got to go, sweetie. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Men start zipping up their pants. Women start pulling down the dresses. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Said so, so I got hey, Amen. Something wrong with this. Something wrong with it. Glory to God. Amen. You didn't even have to have, you didn't have to know all this deep stuff to know that what I'm in ain't right. I got to get out of this. Glory to God. It don't feel right no more. It's something, something about it done changed. It, that was the glory of God. That was the glory of Christ living on the inside. We were beholding his glory. Come on, somebody. The fact that he had power over all our flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power over all the flesh. Glory to God. We were beholding his glory. Glory to God. Isn't that something to be excited about? Then clap your hands and tell him thank you. Praise the Lord. I think he needs a, a bigger applaud. A greater applaud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think he needs a standing ovation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand up and give him the biggest applaud that you can. Hallelujah. 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 You know, just thinking about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just thinking about it, that God, that Jesus had to trust the Father to take his soul out of the spirit and send it to hell and retrieve it back again is enough to give God praise. Is enough to give God praise. Hallelujah. So we are at the same place with Jesus. One in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And I, I thought about it and I, you, you know, I heard when, when, when the apostles speak that the Lord, the Father, continues to speak to her. And there's much more that he wants to say to us. But when I thought about it, I said, God, you have given me sufficient, even if I don't hear anymore, to save my soul and save a whole nation. God is just awesome. He's just awesome. Can we just lift our hands to him as we just wave it and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you might need to just close your eyes and just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing to them. Closer I get, the more I see the glory of the soon coming King. Oh, the glory of Jesus shines brighter and brighter. The closer I get, the more. your presence always Lord keep us holy always shine your light on us always and bring us closer and closer so we can see the glory shines brighter The closer I get, the more I see the glory of the soon coming King. Oh, the glory of Jesus shines brighter and brighter. Oh, yeah. The closer I get, the more I see. Glory of the soon coming King. Amen. Hallelujah. The glory of Jesus. Hallelujah. Some of us are in His presence and we are feeling His joy and we feel how we delight His heart. And you know, Doc started out by saying some of us might be depressed or might be might be feeling heavy or whatever it is, you know, but inside of an atmosphere like this, it's inside of the presence of the Lord that we just need to make some decisions. That whatever it's going to cost me, it's okay. So I don't have to get depressed about life's circumstances. I don't have to get depressed about the events of my life and the situations of my life, life and relationships that I'm in. Because there's a greater power on the inside. And these situations were already thought about and thought through by God. And it's for my making. It's part of that suffering. It's part of that opportunity to enter into the fellowship of his suffering. And so if that is your situation, just let it go. Release yourself and relieve your soul unto Jesus today. Hallelujah. So you might be full of the Holy Ghost. God's Spirit might be dwelling inside of you, but it's not going your way. You want it to go a certain way, it's not going your way. God is saying, just trust me with the way it's going. It's for your making. So just trust God today and rejoice in Him. Trust God today and just rejoice in Him. You will see the glory of Jesus if you just trust God today 
and rejoice in him. God just wants you to trust him. The same trust that you provided him at the point when you received salvation is that same trust he wants for you to continue to provide him through the circumstances of your life. So let's trust the Lord today. You know, God has us through a season of purging and just making some decisions. Because when God comes to shake, you know, it's those on the periphery that will be easily shaken off, you know. Those in the center and those in the deep, the shaking will come. But when the shaking comes, it won't affect us. To get into the deep, we must agree with God. We must agree with all that he said. Oh, God has been pouring out himself to us over the last couple of weeks and months. God is going to do something. He's going to do something great, something awesome, something humongous, something large, something that there's no adjective in the dictionary to describe it. But just stay inside of him, agree with him, abide in him, and let his word abide in us. And we're going to see the power of God inside of what he's spoken over us. But if it is that the presence and the Holy Ghost is pricking your heart and you want to come to the altar, come. If it is that you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're hearing and you want his spirit, come. If it is that you have the Holy Ghost but you're still struggling, and you ought not really to be struggling, but if that is your situation, just come. We're not going to be tearing a whole lot. But just come. The word is powerful enough to change us. Hallelujah. And our walk inside of humility to despise the shame sometimes is the first step, you know, that we need to make just for God to continue to move inside of our hearts. So if you need help from the Holy Ghost today, come, let's pray together. There's no shame in that. You know, I prefer to be totally ashamed now than to stand before him and be ashamed. I prefer that. I prefer that you think I'm somewhere where I'm not and I make it known that I'm not where you think I am because I need to make it right than to stand before God and be ashamed. So this is an opportunity, a grand opportunity, a gracious opportunity, a merciful opportunity. Somebody came to me the other day and the person talked about a space of grace. Grace is that place where God's, is God's influence so this is the space, you know, for you to receive God's influence even now. Is there one who wants to say, pray with me or pray for me? Come. We're going to be moving to collect the offering, but we'd, we'd like to pray with you. We want none left behind. We want none lost. We want none shaken off. We want us all to make it together inside of him. Amen. So if there is one in his presence, you say, you say, God makes no mistakes, so when he calls and he, he gathers us together, uh, there is a word that he has for each of us, every single one of us. That's why he, he, he uses the one that pulls us together. So if you're here and you're not saved, and you're in this message, it means that God wants to save you. So if that's you, come and let us pray with you. If you're ready for salvation, come and let us pray with you. If you have the Holy Ghost and, and, and you're shaky, come and let us pray with you. Because we want all of us to be steadfast and unmovable, unshakable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, my sister. Is there anybody else we're going to be praying? Hallelujah. Is there anybody else? And those who are viewing um, by television or by other technological means... If you've heard the Lord and there's a burden in your heart, if you hear the Lord and you know that there's a spot of sin somewhere, if you hear the Lord and you know you've not pleased him, this is also your opportunity. Make an altar where you are. Whatever you're doing, just stop and give God this very precious moment. This moment that you have. Give to him this moment and make it right. Amen. Amen. And when you finish... We want you also to just give to the ministry. You know how to do it. Go to donations and follow the prompts. And uh, sow inside on, continue to sow inside of this ministry that's changing lives, changing your life included. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Is there one more? Is there one more? So this is why Jesus went to hell, amen? Why his soul went to hell. 
And if it is one that we have to tarry with at the altar, we'll do that. You know, somebody had to tarry with some of us when we were there. Hallelujah. And we'll spend that time with that person. If it is that you're saved and you need some strength, also come. Hallelujah. sing that same song. Play it very softly. Sing it very softly. We're going to pray. We're going to reach out to God with an appreciative heart. Just a thankful heart. Just a gracious heart. A heart that's full of gratitude for what he's done in us. And we want to trust him for what he's going to be doing or is doing in the hearts of our brother and sister at the altar. Hallelujah. So we are not going to have any spectators. We're going we're gonna to glorify God as we pray and we agree together in prayer. And as the Holy Ghost continues to hover over this place, as we continue to feel his presence and his love actually wrapping us up. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you today for this place, Lord Jesus. This just holy place, Lord, holy ground, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, even for the... Uh, the obedience, oh God, of our pastor, our apostle, Lord. Oh God, pushing against what she might have been experiencing health-wise, oh God, and allowing you to use her to deliver such a powerful, encouraging message, Lord, to our hearts, Lord Jesus. Father, we ask that you touch her body. Father, we ask that you just make her well and make her, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen her, oh God, to finish that thing, oh God, that you have targeted her for her life to complete, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we we just ask, oh God, that whoever else needs a touch from you inside of their body, Lord Jesus. Those in the hospital, Lord, remember our brother Ronald even now, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you have already done, Lord, in our bodies. Thank you for what you're doing, Lord Jesus. Complete that which you've started, Lord. But more so, Lord, our souls, Lord. Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for taking us out of the flesh and placing us in the spirit with Jesus where you are, oh God. That we won with you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the understanding of that and, and what that means to us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We, we glorify you and appreciate you and we exalt you, O oh God, for it, Lord. And Father, even as our souls have responded to you at the altar, Lord, these souls who have responded to you at the altar, you know just what is needed, Lord Jesus. 
Father, we ask, oh God, that you will not let them leave empty, Lord Jesus. Father, that they will not turn away and receive nothing from you, Lord. But cause that their hearts will be brought to a place of true, complete brokenness and contriteness, Lord. That you will not despise, oh God, their offering of evil coming before you. And Lord, say, Lord, help me, Lord. So help our sister that was here. Help Kisai that was here, Lord Jesus. Lord, our hearts go out, oh God, for those who come to you, Lord. But God, we trust you, Lord. Because it's not by, by might nor by power, Lord. And we're watching no flesh, Lord. But we know, oh God, that you will hear our prayer, Lord. For we pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we lift you up. We exalt you and we glorify you in our hearts and in this place. Father, remember those who did not come to the altar, Lord, but needed to have come, Lord Jesus. And you know what is going on in those hearts, Lord. We ask that you'll meet them, Lord. You'll meet our brothers and our sisters, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you will fan that fire, that flame inside of their heart, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you will ignite and burn up everything that needs to be burnt up, Lord Jesus Christ. So they won't even know themselves, Lord, even as you change them, Lord God. Even as you cause them, oh God, to be formed, for, for Christ to be formed inside of them. We bless you. We bless you, God. We lift up our hands to you and bless you, Lord. We lift up our hands and know that we can say we're lifting holy hands to you, Jesus. We lift holy hands to you, Lord. We lift our hands to you and we say we appreciate you. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, Lord, to talk to the rest of the church who has been viewing us. I want to say we appreciate you and we thank you for just joining us, joining us today. It's really been a pleasure for you to be a participant in the service and we ask that you will join us again um, as we continue. You know the days. We will be here again next week Sunday for Sunday morning live but in the week we'll be here on Wednesday for discipleship and we look forward to growing together in the Lord See you then. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.